Hi, boys and girls. This week, I'm going to be sharing some stories from around the world. Well, when I was a little boy, I used to like to play with trucks. I know girls like to play with dolls, and I like to play with trucks. And uh, this little yellow truck has a story all behind it. Actually, the story took place just when I was just a little baby. So I don't remember this part of the story other than the fact that a missionary who told the story to me told me about where I grew up and about this big yellow truck. His name was Pastor Eric B. Hare. And Eric B. Hare tells the story of the big yellow truck. And later on in life, I rode on the big yellow truck, although it had been painted green. But I'm getting ahead of myself. So let me tell you a little story about this yellow truck. I grew up far away from here. I grew up on a little island that kind of is like a teardrop-shaped island called Sri Lanka. Back then, when I was living there, it was called Ceylon. And it's right off of the coast of India. My mom and dad were missionaries from India, and they worked on the island of Sri Lanka. That's where I was born. This is my family. Here's a picture of me in the middle with my dad and my mom and my baby brother and my little sister. We grew up in the, on this island, and we actually, I was born on a, in a town called Candy. Some kids used to call me the Candy Man because of that. But actually, I grew up in a school that was called Lakpahana, which means light on a hill. That's where this story about the big yellow truck takes place. Well, I want to tell you a little bit about this island. Beautiful Candy is located and nestled up in the mountains of Sri Lanka. And this is where I was born. This was the nearest town closest to the school, the mission school where I went to. You know, Ceylon, or Sri Lanka as it's called today, is primarily a Buddhist country. Most of the people worship idols of Buddha. If everywhere you go, you'll find a shrine to Buddha. And these are, these are people that are dressed up with their Buddhist robes and they worship Buddha. Well, when we had a Christian school that talked about Jesus, these Buddhists were not very happy about that. And so <clears throat> they would come and, and they, would, uh, they would say, we don't want your school here. And they were very angry about our school. They did not like it. You know, Sri Lanka is a beautiful island. Everywhere you go, you'll see lots of rice fields and, 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 and rice is the main food that people eat there. And so there are a lot of rice fields all across Sri Lanka. You'll find a lots, of, lots of elephants. There are a lot of wild elephants in Sri Lanka. And there's all kinds of wildlife and beauty there. This is a, a water lily that is one of the uh, most beautiful flowers that's uh, found in Sri Lanka. There are orchids all over the place. Uh, this rooster is the national bird of, uh, uh, of India, of Sri Lanka, rather. And uh, then you'll find all kinds of colorful birds, and there's obviously lots of monkeys. And I'll, I'll be telling you a story a little later on about uh, monkeys and how they came into, uh, into our backyard. Well, there's some dangerous things also in Sri Lanka. There are some very, very poisonous snakes. This is a cobra, and it is probably one of the most deadly snakes that you'll find in Sri Lanka. Well... I think probably the most beautiful part of Sri Lanka are the people. There are wonderful, wonderful people there. Most of them worship Buddha, but they're very good people and, uh, and very kind people. I grew up on this island. I, I was there from the time I was born all the way till I was 11 years old. But when I was born, they were building this school called Lakpahana. I didn't know about it, but in order to get the supplies there, they had to buy a truck. And so the people bought a truck. Missionaries uh, you know, came, and, and people from all over the world donated money so they could buy a truck, so they could buy the building supplies and, and all the brick and, and the wood and all the building things that you use to make buildings with. They would bring it on this truck and bring it to the school. Well... You know, if you look, this is the for one of the first principals of the school. His name was Pastor Eric Jurians, and he would drive the truck. 
and uh, Pastor Eric Jurians was a wonderful person. I knew him, but this story happened before I was born. And, uh, and he was driving the truck. Actually, I was probably just a little baby when the actual story took place. He was driving the truck, and while he was driving the truck, he decided that he had to go into Candy to buy some supplies because that was the very nearest town. Well, Pastor Jurians decided that he would drive with his, the truck with his family. He didn't want to go by himself, so he took his wife and his little baby, and they all got in the truck, and they were going to have a wonderful day in Candy as they went down there uh, to look for this, all the supplies that they needed uh, for the building and for the school. Well, to get into Candy is kind of dangerous because you have to go on these roads that are windy all the way through the mountains because the school is located up in the mountains in the hills of, of uh, uh, Sri Lanka, up, in the, up very, at a very high elevation. Well, to get down to Candy, you have to go through these very windy, windy roads. Well, one day, as, as Pastor Jurians and his wife, as they were heading down this windy road, uh, he, was, he was just trying to be very, very careful because some of, the, some of the places are very narrow on this road. And if you're coming too fast, uh, it could be kind of dangerous. And so he was trying to be very, very careful. Well, as he was coming down this road, he noticed that there was a bus also that was coming up. But he was going too fast and because he was going down and the bus was coming up and the bus was filled with lots of passengers. They were all coming from Candy and they were going up to another town. Uh, and and as, the, as that bus was coming up the mountain, he realized that he was in big trouble because he realized that he couldn't slow down his truck to pull over to the side. And he realized right then he had to make a very important decision. If he went straight ahead, he would hit that bus and that bus would go over the cliff with all of those people and everybody would lose their lives. He said, oh God, help me. What am I going to do? Those precious people that are on the bus, I don't know, I don't, I don't want to do anything to harm them. And so he, was, he, he couldn't get over and he, he looked at all of that, he looked at that bus and in, in a very quick moment he said a quick prayer to Jesus and said, Dear Jesus, I don't want to hit that bus. I don't want to hit that bus. I don't want to hurt any of those people. And so he just turned his steering wheel real hard. But you know what that meant? It wasn't the bus that was going to go over the cliff. He went over the cliff with that big yellow truck. And so the truck just went tumbling down the hillside and, and it just landed upside down. And you know, when you have a crash like that and it's a very bad crash, the first thing you worry about is your family. And so the very first thing he's, he said, he called his wife and he called his wife's name and he called his baby's name and there wasn't a sound. But then finally he heard a moaning sound from his wife. It's, it's, Eric, are you okay? And he, he said, yes, are you okay? And he says, yes, I think I am. And so he, he slowly tried to push the door open and it was kind of locked. And so he was able to kick the other door open. And as he kicked the door open, he heard a little baby's cry. And he says, oh, thank you, Jesus. My baby is still alive. And so he got out of the truck and then pulled his wife and his baby out and he, 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 and they only had a few scratches on them. No broken bones, nothing bad, just a few cuts and bruises on them, but the truck was pretty badly damaged. Then they looked up on top of the hill and as they looked, all the people had gotten out of the bus and they thought for sure everybody had died on that big yellow truck. It looked pretty bad. But all of them looked down and they saw Pastor Eric Jurians and they saw his wife and they saw him holding his little baby and, and they said, wow, I can't believe that their God saved them. And they knew, they knew that he had turned his truck just so that he would avoid having, hitting that truck, that, that bus. And because he avoided hitting that bus, all of their lives were saved. And so they were just so grateful. They thought, 
wow, we worship Buddha and they worship Jesus Christ and that's what their school is all about and we've been mad about their school but this is a good place. These people are good people. We shouldn't be mad at them. They saved our lives today. And many of those boys and girls came to the school and they came to that school and decided that they would come there. You know, that truck, after it was, after it was uh, fixed up, they repainted it. They didn't paint it yellow anymore. They painted it green. By the time I was a little boy, that's what the truck looked like. It was a green truck. And you know what? I would go to that school, and I would go to that school and ride in that green truck, and as I would ride in that green truck, I remembered that once upon a time, there was a yellow truck. And that story about the yellow truck and how God saved Pastor Jurians and his family because he cared so much about those people that he was even willing to give his own life so that those people would be saved. You know what? I would sometimes sit in the back and I would look on the, in the back of that truck and I would look and underneath the paint of that green paint, I would see little yellow specks and I'd say, oh, this was once a yellow truck. And you know what? When I was 11 years old and I was getting ready with my mom and my, my family to come to America, I got my suitcases and we put it in the back of that truck as we were going to the train station to get on a train to start making our way to America. And that yellow truck, which was now a green truck, carried me to the train station that brought me to America. Jesus told us, a new commandment I give to you, that you love one another even as I have loved you, that you also love one another. By this all men, whether they're Buddhists or whatever they are, all men will know that you are my disciples if you have love for one another. I thank God for the story of that yellow truck and for Pastor Jurians who cared so much about those people that he was even willing to risk his life to save all of those people. You know what? That's what Jesus did for you and me. And you know, as I think about the story of that yellow truck, I think that we need to also learn a lesson that we should love and care for one another. And I hope that you'll always remember that. May God bless you.